in your Bible to the book of John chapter 12. John chapter 12. Hallelujah. Angel, she went into this chapter, but further down is where I'm going to start the message out. Amen. Hallelujah. John chapter 12. The Bible says in um, verse um, 12. <coughs> the scripture said on the next day, much people that will come to the feast when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem took branches of palm trees and went forth to meet him and cried, Hosanna, blessed is he that, blessed is the king of Israel that cometh in the name of the Lord. And Jesus, when he had found a young ass and there sat thereon, as it is written, Fear not, daughter of Zion, behold thy king cometh sitting on an ass's coat. These things understood not his disciples at the first, but when Jesus was glorified, then remembered they that these things were written of him, and that they had done these things unto him. You may be seated. I want to preach to you today on Hosanna and the highest. The Bible said that in the beginning of this, this chapter that, that it, it was right before the Passover, uh, the sixth day before the Passover, before Jesus went to the cross. And, and the, 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 the day today as we know it is Palm Sunday, that the world celebrates this Sunday as Palm Sunday. And we're going to find out what, why do we celebrate the, the Palm Sunday, you know, related to what Christ has done for you in our life. The Bible said that it was six days before he went to the cross, and there he was at a place that, that he was not there by himself, but with Lazarus also, because he had already raised him from the dead. Yeah. And the people came there to see not just Jesus, but they came to see Lazarus also. Yeah. So they were excited about seeing the one that he raised from the dead. And the Bible said that Jesus, you know, uh, uh, said right here that, in fact, the scripture said that uh, the, the Pharisees and the chief priests were, were upset because the people were going after Jesus. But then the Bible says here in, in the, the next day after the feast, that more people came to Jerusalem because they heard that Jesus was there in Jerusalem. And the Bible said they were so excited that day that they took palm branches of uh, of a, the, the, the branches of the palm tree and went forth to meet Jesus. And it was like a parade that they had that day. And the Bible said as the people stood on the side of the road and Jesus rode the donkey that day, they took the palm, uh, tree, the branches of the palm tree and they laid it before him. And they began to get excited and say, Blessed is the king of Israel that comes in the name of the Lord. Why would they use a branch of a palm tree that day? What is the meaning of the branch of the palm tree? You know, the Bible tells us in the book of uh, Joel chapter 1 that all the trees uh, uh, of the field had withered from the trees because the joy had been removed, had withered from the sons of man. You see, the Bible said that the palm tree represents joy. It represents the joy that we should have as a Christian. You see, the Bible says, without joy we will wither in our spirit. Amen. Without joy we will wither in our lives. So this represented that day that when they put that, that branch of that palm tree across from Jesus, they began to cry out, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. What they were saying that day that you are our joy. Yeah. You are our strength. Yeah. You are our strong yeah. support. Yeah. That's what it means, Lord, hallelujah, hallelujah. To give a strong support, to give a strength to the people, to support the people, to erect the people, to hold them up, hallelujah. You see, what does the Bible tell you and I about joy? He said in the book of Nehemiah that the joy of the Lord is our strength. He says right here, what does it mean? That if we're going to have strength, it's got to come from the Lord. Yeah. Our Lord. Our strength has to come from God. Our joy has to come from God. It means that we have to hook up. We've got to unite ourselves with God. Yeah. When we are not, we join up with Him, then we will receive joy. How, does, how do we receive the joy of the Lord? Yeah. The Bible tells us in the book of Psalms that 
in the presence of the Lord. There's fullness of joy. So we have to know today that we can recognize the fact that if we need joy today, we got to be joined with Christ. If we need joy today, we got to hook up with Jesus. we got to hang with Jesus. We have to unite with Jesus. We have to spend time with Jesus. And when we spend time with Him, He will give us strength, hallelujah, to carry on whatever we have to carry on. And He says, where do we find this joy? In the presence of the Lord. He said, in the presence of the Lord, there's not just a little bit of joy. There's not just a drop of joy. But in the presence of the Lord, there is fullness of joy. We will be full with joy. Hallelujah. You see, the Bible tells in the book of Isaiah chapter 51 about joy right there. You see, when we celebrate Palm Sunday, we're not celebrating just a palm, a branch off of a palm tree. But we got to understand what it means when they done that that day when Jesus was in the earth. What they were doing was saying, we know that you are joy. We know that we've had sorrowful times. We know we have been discouraged. We have been disappointed times. But we know one thing that you yes. are the one that can give us joy and yes. give us strength yes. and give us health and give us hope. Hallelujah. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he that comes in the yes. name of the Lord. Yes. We know you represent God. We know you represent the Lord. We know you represent a place called heaven and this earth that will change us, that will change our lives, that will change things for us. And Isaiah chapter 51 Verse 11, the scriptures tells us there. He speaks about joy there. Isaiah chapter 51, verse 11. I want to read it. Because the scripture tells us right here. Therefore the redeemed of the Lord. Who is the redeemed of the Lord? He said, therefore the redeemed of the Lord shall return and come with singing unto Zion. And everlasting joy shall be upon their heads. Oh, yeah. They shall obtain gladness and joy, and sorrow and mourning shall flee away. Yeah. That day when they celebrate that day, it meant this scripture right here, that they had come to return to the Lord. They had come to a place to sing. They had come to a place to receive not just joy for today and be gone tomorrow, wow. an everlasting joy. Yeah. What does the Bible say right here? Well, we realize we have a, realis a realization when we have a revelation, when we have an impartation of God's Word in our life by His Spirit, we recognize His work. He's talking about the work that He did. The redeem the Lord, the, the price that Christ paid for you and I to redeem us from sin, to redeem us from hell, to redeem us from all the things that, you know, that would hinder our walk with Him. He said we will come with everlasting joy when we recognize and realize the works that the Lord himself did for you and I. Yes. Hallelujah. What brings joy? What brings you and I joy? Uh -huh. Jesus said, the word says in, in 1 John, he tells us what brings us joy. 1 John, in the back of the word. Let's go there, hallelujah. 1 John tells us what brings you and I joy. He said in verses 1 through 4, That which was from the beginning which we have heard, that which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon in our hands, and handled of the work of life. For the life was manifested or made known, and we have seen it. And we bear witness and show unto you that eternal life, which was with the Father, it was manifested unto us. That which we have seen and heard, declare we unto you that you also may have fellowship with us, and truly our fellowship is with the Father and His Son, Jesus Christ. Yeah. And these things write we unto you, that your joy may be full. Whose joy are they talking about? Uh, They're talking about your joy, my joy. Uh, How can our joy be full? What brings joy here? The Bible said the Word brings to you and I joy. Yeah. When we recognize what the Word says, what yeah. the Word means for you and I, the Word is life. He said we have seen it, we have heard it, we have handled it. We have experienced it in our life. When you learn how to experience the Word of God in your life, it's going to bring you joy. Yeah. When we see what God's Word says to you, about you, and for you, and you see it working in your life, you, it's going to bring you joy. Yeah. He says right here, that's what brings you and I joy. The Word of God brings us joy. What else brings us joy in our life? Yeah. Who brings the joy to you and I? He says, fellowship brings you and I joy. That's what the Word said. When we fellowship with the Lord, we fellowship with Him. The Bible said that we will have joy in yes. our lives. Hallelujah. Yes. 
You see, the Word of God he's talking about is the Word that has life. The Word of God has life. It means it has a heartbeat. It means it's alive. Do you have a heartbeat today? Are you alive today? Well, he says in the Word that the Word of God is like or is a heartbeat. It has life for you and I today. And that should bring you and I joy. Hallelujah. He said the Word of God here. He said that we are witness of the Word. Are we a witness of the Word of God today in our lives? What has Jesus done for you today in your life? What has He done for you that you can bear witness of this Word? I think every one of us can say we can bear witness of this Word through salvation, through the baptism of the Holy Ghost, uh, through healing, through deliverance, through restoration. We know that our God is real. We can bear witness that this Word is true and, and and it is real for you and I. That should bring you and I joy. He said, joy. He said, all these things was made known to them. And it should be have made known to you and I. He said, and we heard about the word. We saw the word work. We bore witness yeah. of the word. It was made known to you and I. And these things, he said, I wrote to you that your joy may be full. Whoa. You see, how do we have full joy? By recognizing, understanding, allowing the word of God to, to give us joy, allowing fellowship with the Lord, being hooked up with Him, and hanging with Him, will bring you and I joy. Hallelujah. The Lord Jesus spoke about joy in the Word of God. You see, the joy He's talking about here is a joy that will, that will uh, not just cheer you up, brighten you up, there's something on the inside of you that your countenance changes when you have joy of the Lord. He's talking about a joy that you can be glad and rejoice in. Hallelujah. A joy that you know that whatever the enemy tries to throw you away, that that when we have joy, you know, the Bible speaks about in the book of uh, Job. He said that, uh, that, uh, in fact, I want to read it there because I think it's important that we see what the Word says here. In the book of Job, chapter 38, it's right after the books of... uh, Psalm. I mean, before Psalm, but it Job. Job. Job chapter 38. He says right here in the Word, Job 38, verse 7. The Bible says that when the morning stars sang together, and all the sons of the God are uh, then. Let me say it again. When the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy. What was happening here? He's asking a question there. The Bible said when the morning stars sang together, that means that there was a split. There was a breaking forth. Something was going to happen. Something was happening at that moment. And what it means is that there was a loud noise, hallelujah, like the trumpets of a battle cry. Now, trumpets of a battle cry means that you're going to win, my friend. Yeah. You're not just going to, you're not just going to uh, win, but you're going to have victory over it yeah. all. That's what he's talking about here, that the joy that was, was, was came out of the sons of God, that they, that's what it meant, hallelujah. Yeah. Joy, hallelujah. Yeah. Joy represents that God is sitting upon his throne. Joy represents that the devil is under your feet. Joy represents that the battle is not ours, but it's the Lord's. Joy represents victory Amen. through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. You see, the Bible said when they, they put those palm leaves before the Lord that day, that's what it meant when we celebrate today. We got to know what we celebrate. We got to know what the cross represents. We got to know what Jesus has done for you and I. Then he says right here, the Lord himself, he spoke about joy many times in the word of God. He said in the book of John chapter 15, John chapter 15, verse 11. He spoke to them about connecting our lives in him. He said he was the true God, and his father was a husbandman. And he said, we must abide in the vine because you don't abide in the vine if you think you have to. Abide means to dwell. Abide means to stay there. Abide means to have that relationship with the Lord. And he began to tell about all these things in 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 chapter 15. And then he said in verse 11, these things have I spoken unto you 
I've told you these things because that my joy might remain in you. Whose joy is he talking about now? Yes. Wow. Think about his joy. He said, these things have I spoken unto you that my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be full. You see, when we are connected in the vine, when we are in that place that Christ says, you see, there's a lot of vines out there in the world. You know, if it, if it wouldn't be, they'd have a lot of different vines. The Bible said he would say he is the true vine. You see, are we connected to the true vine today? Are we connected to the vines of the world? Are we connected to other things? Are we connected in, to the true vine in Christ? Are we abiding in him? Are we dwelling in him? Are we remaining in him? Because the Bible said when we're in that place in our life, he said that we're going to experience his joy to remain in us. And when it remains in us, our joy will be full. Hallelujah. You see, the Bible speaks about, in the book of Joel, it speaks about the things that happened in life. Discouragement came. Their lives were dried up. They were withered. And to that point that when you dry up and you wither, you're not, you're discouraged. And the Bible said it came because the joy was taken out of their lives. That's why it's important for you and I to experience the joy of the Lord. Not just to experience it and when things go good. Do we're talking about experiencing His joy every day of our life. Hallelujah. He says in the book of John 16, chapter 16, he says in verse 24, he said, Hitherto you have asked nothing in my name. Until this time, he says, you have not asked anything in my name. But the Lord said himself, Hitherto have you asked nothing in my name. Ask and you shall receive that your joy may be full. He said, I want you to ask something in my name. I want you to yes. pray and ask something in my name that you can receive. Yes. He said, because when you ask it and you receive it, your joy yes. will be made full. Yes. He said, until that time they had not done so. You see, that's why it's important for you and I. The prayer is, a, is asking God. Prayer is seeking God. Prayer is knocking. Prayer is our communication and our voice to heaven. To connect with God. Now we can't connect with God unless we go through Jesus. Yes. And we can't connect with God unless we connect with the Word. Amen. We can't connect with God unless we remain and dwell in Him. Hallelujah. Yes. He said He wants you and I to do this. Why? That our joy can be full. Hallelujah. When your joy is full, you're not going to get discouraged. You're not going to stay down. When your joy is full, you're not going to stay in the valley. He's going to take you out of the valley. Yes, right. You're going to know that he is a living in the valley. Yes. When, you, when your joy is full, you, you're going to know that the mountain that you can speak to will be removed yes. because of what Christ has done. Amen. Amen. You see, he's talking about a place in him, a relationship in Christ in our life yes. that keeps us in that place of trust, that keeps us in that place of faith, that keeps us in that place of expectancy called hope. Hallelujah. Because the Bible said if there's hope that is seen, what good is hope? Hope is the relieving for God of those things that you cannot see and that you cannot do on your own. That you know that God said his word. He is, he will, and he will do it. Amen. All right, all right. He said in the book of John chapter 17, the Lord Jesus was praying for the church. Praying for them, and he was praying for you and I, because the scriptures tell us. And then he says right here, in verse 13, in fact, let me just say, let's read verse Verse 8. For I have given unto them the words which thou gave me, and they have received them. And they have known surely that I came out from thee, and they have believed that thou sent me. Jesus said to the Father in his prayer, he said, I gave them the words you told me to give. I did what you told me to do, and they have received the words that you told me to give to them, and they have received it. And he said, now he said, all of mine, and all mine are thine, and thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world. And I come to thee, Holy Father. 
keep through thy own name those whom thou hast given thee, that they may be one as we are one. His prayer was that those that are in the world, that he would keep you and I yeah. by his spirit and by his power, that he would keep us safe from harm and evil, that he would keep us in the place that our faith can be sure and assured in him. He would keep us in that place that our confidence would know that he, that he came from heaven and that he represents heaven to this earth, to those in the earth. And he says, while I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that thou gave me I have kept, and none of them is lost, but the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. And he said, and now come to thee. Verse 13. And now come I to thee, and these things I speak in the world, that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. He said, I'm asking you to do these things, that the, those things that I have spoken to them, the things that you and I have heard through the word of God, through the, through the relationship that we have with Christ, he said, I want you to make it so real and so real to them and answer their prayer that they would know without a shadow of a doubt for this one reason, that my joy be fulfilled in themselves, individual, at each one of us, not just corporate, but individual. And he says, I have given them thy word, and the world hath hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Do you know that when you serve in Christ, that the world is not going to like you? They're going to hate you for his name's sake. Mm -hmm. He said, I pray not just that I should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil. I'm not asking you to take them out, Lord. I'm asking you to protect them from evil. He said, they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through thy truth, for thy word is true. How I can, what does it mean to be sanctified? It means to be set apart. How can you and I be set apart as a Christian today? How can we set apart and serve the Lord, you know, apart from the things of this world? We're in the world, but not of the world. How can that be? He tells us right here, it'll come one way through his word, because his word is true. So you see, when we get into the Word of God, when we begin to see what the Word said, we're not going to have any trouble serving God. We're not going to have any trouble serving the Lord. We're not going to be concerned about all these things. We're going to be concerned about what thus said the Lord has said and, and experience what He has given to you and I. And then He says right here, Sanctify them through Thy Word, for Thy Word is truth. And as Thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. And for their sakes I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified through the truth. So the truth will sanctify you. The truth will set you apart. Because I see a lot of Christians today doing things that they think is okay with God. And it's not okay. But I, I, it, it, either they know, they've read the word and ignored it, or they have not let the word take root in their heart. Because when the word is in your heart, yes. it's going to set you apart with the truth that God has given to you and I. He said you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. It will free you from how to walk with the Lord in this life as a Christian. Amen. He says, Sanctify them through thy truth, for thy word is truth. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. And for their sakes I sanctify myself, that they also may be sanctified through the truth. Neither pray I for these alone, so he's praying for you and I because the scripture tells us. Yeah. Neither do I pray for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on thee through their words. That they all may be one as thou Father art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. Jesus, our Lord and Savior, prayed this prayer. And now come I to thee. That these things I speak in the world, that they might have their joy, my joy, fulfilled in themselves. You see, the problems that we face is not really the problem. It's the answer that we need to the problem. And the answer that we need to the problem, as we see in the Word today, is that without joy, without joy, the Bible said the joy of the Lord is our strength. So we, we need to receive Look up and unite and join with Jesus to receive his joy. Amen. And when we hook up with him, he will give us joy. 
You see, because without joy, everything in life is going to be a work. Everything in life is going to be a burden. Everything in life is going to be a weight. Because you will always, without the joy of the Lord, there will always be something lacking and always something missing. Without joy, the opposite of joy is angry, upset. Then all the, when you get angry and upset all the time, then you're going to be burdened down, then you're going to be worried, then you're going to be full of anxiety, and then you have no joy at all. You see, when Nehemiah, God spoke to him about, about rebuilding the walls of Jerusalem in his day and time, the Bible said that he opened the door. The first thing he did was find favor with the king. You and I have found favor with the king. But you see, when he began to walk in that place that God called him, did he have opposition? Yes, he had all kinds of opposition. Every step that he took, the enemy used people to try to hinder his walk with God, hinder the way But God had ordained for him to do that work he called him to. Yeah. And when it was all finished and done, through all the opposition, through all the work, you know, they even had some that showed up and said he, was, he had, had went up uh, to rebuild the, 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 the wall and the, the place that God told him. They wanted him to come down to have a meeting with him. He said, I don't have time, come, I don't have time to come down to talk to you. You see, lots of times when you're in that place that God wants you, you have all kinds of people that will come to you to try to distract you, to try to hinder you, to try to keep you from the very place that God has for you. I can guarantee you find yourself a place of prayer and your phone's going to ring. It'll ring every two minutes. Yeah, I can guarantee it. You see, but we got to make up our mind that we have to set aside special time with the Lord. That nothing and no one will distract us, interfere, and allow us to be taken away from that place. Because that's where you and I receive yes. what? Joy. Amen. Because in His presence is fullness of joy. I don't care if you spend five hours with the Lord or if you can spend five minutes with the Lord. But I can guarantee you when His presence comes, yes. when His presence comes, then you will have not just joy, my friend, but fullness of joy. Yeah. Hallelujah. And then Nehemiah told him, when it was all over, he said, eat, drink, and be merry, and go on your way happy, be cheerful, because the joy of the Lord is your strength. Amen. What was he telling him? We didn't get strength from ourselves to do this work. We didn't get strength from ourselves to finish this work, but we got our strength from the Lord. He is the one that gave us strength, and how did he give us his strength? By giving us his joy. When we stayed hooked up with him, when we knew his direction, when we knew his way, when we knew what he wanted, and we stayed there and didn't back up, didn't quit. But if we stayed in that place, he said we were joined with Christ, yeah. and he was joined with us, yeah. and that joy came from heaven to our heart and soul, and that's what gave us the strength to carry on. Not only did God give him the strength to carry on, but the Bible said that they completed that work in so many days, and that everybody knew yes. around that that work was yeah. wrath of God. Yes. Everybody tried to hinder it. Everybody tried to stop it. They knew that it was a work of God. You see, when you get saved, when God saves you, my friend, I guarantee you people that knew you before and know you after you're saved, they're going to know whatever happened inside of you is a work of God because it's undeniable. Hallelujah. When you first get saved, you're full of joy. And then the enemy shows up to try to steal your joy. Because if he can steal your joy, he will steal your strength. If you can steal your strength, you will quit. That's and that's why it's so important that you and I recognize the fact that the joy of the Lord is our strength. We recognize the fact that our fellowship is worth You're not even him who gives you and I joy. Hallelujah. You see, the joy of the Lord comes one way through him. 